Hello, Hello profilers. <laughs> Welcome to episode 50. We are profiling Denzel Washington. Woo-hoo. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's profile. <laughs> hello again, profiles. You don't need to do that again. No, we don't need to say that again. No, no, no. We said hello, and we're so excited to be talking about Denzel Washington. Can you believe this is our fiftieth episode? Our fiftieth episode, and that, my friend, gets a massive Woo! high five. Profiling fifty episodes. Take a drink. We've been doing this for a year and a half. Profiled <laughs> fifty people. Interviewed more than sixty-five people. Have either wow. sat with us on camera or have called in to our special little show profiles f- profiles that we've been doing and put our hearts into and yes. we had to go big with our 50th, ep- 50th episode here so Denzel Washington long overdue right yeah he is an incredible actor he's also a director and a producer but he's someone when once you start to delve into the filmography you think like how has he had so many incredible performances yeah because he can play you know big and loud and fierce he can play quiet cool and he can play scary but he could also smile and be happy and sexy and charming he can do it all he's pretty incredible he can do it all and obviously when he does the great movies they're great. He's great in them. But even the movies that are not so great. He's great in them. He is still great <laughs> in them. I and mean, he's like Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise, Julia Roberts, Leonardo DiCaprio, actors and actresses that you can watch over and over again in movies, whether they are good or not, because they are such engaging personalities. Yeah. Five movies with the late, great Tony Scott, yeah. four films with director Spike Lee. And when it comes to his inspiration, Denzel Washington said, I like to go to new places. I was trained in theater it was instilled in me to take chances because failure is a part of growth wow. if you're going to fail fail big and take chances so i've done that or at least i've tried to do that he definitely has taken chances he's played a lot of real life people which yep. is always a big risk but he pulls it off amazing performances um and he's also just extremely nice person incredibly yep. talented but really really nice when you interview him and he's so charismatic and whenever i ask him about one of his movies like if he's going to do this movie or that movie he always says the same thing to me. If it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love it. And speaking of stages, I just read today the news that he's going to be directing a version of Fences, which is a Broadway play where he won the Tony Award for being in it. So he's going to direct that on the big screen coming soon. So that'll be his third movie as a yeah, director. Yeah, and he hasn't directed like in more than a decade. Since uh, The Great Debaters in mm-hmm. 2007 and Antoine Fisher, his directorial debut in 2002. Great career, wonderful life <laughs> wonderful indeed. Life. And that's always our cue, isn't it? Let's roll. It's a wonderful life. Denzel Hayes Washington Jr. was born on December 28, 1954 in Mount Vernon, New York. After graduating from high school, Washington enrolled at Fordham University, where he majored in journalism. He soon caught the acting bug, and upon his graduation, he moved to San Francisco and enrolled at the American Conservatory Theater. He left after just one year and moved to New York to pursue acting full-time. Washington made his small screen debut in the 1977 made-for-TV movie Wilma, followed four years later by his feature film debut alongside George Siegel in the 1981 comedy Carbon Copy. His big break came when he was cast as Dr. Philip Chandler in the Emmy-winning TV series St. Elsewhere, where he stayed for its six-year run. Critically acclaimed feature films soon followed, including 1989's Glory, for which he won his first Academy Award, Mo Better Blues, and Malcolm X. Denzel Washington has three Golden Globes, including the coveted Cecil B. DeMille Award, a Tony Award, and two Oscars. He was nominated four other times. I love Pit Boss's voice. His so good. Voice, so good. And I also love seeing all our favorites Aww, in the like YouTube. Who? Who's in the chat room today? Right now, we've got Liam Legrand, Joshua Price, Ben Kramer, Timothy Hussack. Um, I saw Jane S. is there, Tyler Myers, Rachel Cushing, who's trying to work and listen at the same time. <laughs> um, all of our favorites. It's so great to see the profilers, you know, just continue to support us from episode one from day to episode one, 50. Ep- 
episode one on August 11th, 2014, when we did our very first profiles on Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Now we're doing our 50th on Denzel. And to everyone listening and watching, please listen in for an important announcement that we're going to make at the end of and the I show. And I love getting tweets. So I just got one today saying, just discovered profiles, and now I've binged eight episodes. So I love that people continue to uh, discover it as it goes along. And hopefully they will continue to discover it and spread the word so other yeah. people discover it as well. And make sure you you share profiles if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you rate and review us on iTunes if you're listening to our podcast. And make sure you like our Facebook page, which is Profiles with Malone and Mance, because it sure is a fun page, especially when everybody chimes in when they do our brackets and they tell us what we love the most about love these that. movies. Okay. But let's get right back to our rundown here and tell me what was your first blood. You might not expect this, but it was much ado about nothing. I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I loved that movie when I was young. It was in 1993, Kenneth Branagh, um, directed by Kenneth Branagh, based, of course, on the William Shakespeare play. And Denzel played Don Pedro, who was the Prince of Aragon, this very noble character. So that's the one that I remember thinking, like, who's that suave guy? He was See, so good in it. I would not have expected that or predicted that. <laughs> yeah. But my who's that guy came in 1987 for Cry Freedom. Yeah. Directed by Sir Ritten at Richard Attenborough. He played Steve Biko, the South African activist. And I had already seen Denzel Washington on St. Elsewhere, which was, you know, just one of the most popular and critically acclaimed TV shows at the time. Mm -hmm. He was on the show the entire six years, but that was really where I went as far as his big screen performance is concerned. Who is this guy? And what a future he has. And he definitely did. Absolutely. As we're going to see now when we get into our Fast Five. At number five is... It requires my assent. I do not give it. And furthermore, you continue upon this course and insist upon this launch without confirming this message Stop first. Bitch. I will be Chief forced back by the rules of precedent, Captain and Commanding Officer of command. the USS Alabama. Regulations I order you to place the XO on under arrest on six charges of Navy regulations. I say you again, I you order you to place the XO under arrest on the charge of mutiny. I had to wow. play the whole thing you gotta because play the whole thing. Oh, those two together, Crimson Tide. Great. First of all, every scene that they have together is great Ooh. in this movie. Released May 12th, 1995. Cost $53 million to make. Total worldwide box office leash was $157 million. Three, three Oscar nominations. Not something you would expect from a film directed by Tony Scott. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ridley, but not Tony. But this is the first of five movies that they did together. Mm -hmm. was nominated for editing, sound editing, and sound. And uh, talk Talk about a really ridiculously entertaining, smart, gripping, tense movie. Claustrophobic yes. inside that submarine. And it all comes down to the the head-to-head -head between Gene Hackman and Denzel Washington. They go toe-to-toe -to -toe together. They're both so strong. Um, I love uh, what... Uh, Oh yeah, I love the fact that <laughs> so, I love the fact that you know this gave Denzel the chance to show really what he could do not only as an actor but a star. So yeah. it really established him as a star coming off the back of Philadelphia and the Pelican Brief, and he is completely believable as this lifelong naval officer who is cool and calm, and but despite all the things thrown at him, and he has a level head until he explodes. But the thing that I like is that you understand both sides. You do understand both sides. It's a great movie where, you know, Gene Hackman is right, but so yeah. is Denzel Washington in this movie. And I love that scene. Mr. Hunter, I've made my decision. I'm captain of this ship. Now shut the bleep up. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like staring at him like, what did you just say? Uh -huh. But they're both completely different. They both have the same sort of goal. They're just going about it in completely different ways. And I love a lot of the dialogue. Not surprising that it was punched up by Quentin, Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino. Particularly all the pop culture references. Silver and Surfer and all that stuff. Silver Surfer and, of course, Star Captain Kirk. Yeah. Yes! So yeah. I was very happy when I saw that in theaters. <laughs> but uh, the U.S. Navy did not cooperate with this movie oh. like they did with Tony Scott's other film, Top Gun. They mm -hmm. cooperated with that big time because of boosted enrollment in the military. Uh, interesting, uh, not so much for, for Washington, but for Gene Hackman, the following actors passed on playing the captain of the Alabama, Al Pacino, Warren <laughs> Beatty, and Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> passed on that but because this was the first of five movies that Denzel did with Tony Scott he had this to say after Tony Scott's passing yeah. he was a great director a genuine friend he had a tremendous passion for life and the art of filmmaking 
and through that was able to share his passion with his cinematic brilliance. Yeah, they became really close friends. Yep. Um, and uh, it's interesting that, you know, they went on to collaborate so many times and um, and then also Denzel worked with Ridley as well. So it's yes. nice to keep it in the Scott family. Roger Ebert had this to say about Crimson Tide. This is the rare kind of war movie that not only thrills people while they're watching it, but invites them to leave the theatre actually discussing the issues and then talking about those two together, said Hackman may be violating procedures, but maybe, maybe he has good reasons. Washington, fearing to unleash war, may leave his country unprotected so again you understand both sides of the story and that's what makes it compelling and entertainment weekly understood both sides as well and their a plus review uh, entertainment weekly owen gleberman said the conflict comes in the battle between two men the sight of two superlatively fierce actors <laughs> working at the top of their game amen to that and Seb Lacey, our profiler, Yay. said uh, about Crimson Tide, For me, Denzel Washington is one of the best actors who rarely puts in a bad performance. My favourite role is Crimson Tide. Going up against an actor like Gene Hackman in a tense situation is amazing. And on YouTube right now, D.A. Sky Thorlifson. <laughs> you can't say that. Thor, Thor Leifson says, dang, I miss Tony Scott. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of people saying like, what? Oh, JNS was like, what? Tarantino? And Joshua Price said, yeah, Tarantino co-wrote this. Just when you think he's done surprising you. Uncredited. Yes. Oh, yeah, uncredited. But uh, there are so many great great performances, great scenes. One of them yeah. we just talked about, the submarine scene, uh -huh. the, the, the showdown between Hackman and Denzel Washington on that. You know, I, in, in talking about one of Denzel Washington's best scene, I could have picked out any one of his speeches he gave oh, in yeah. Malcolm X. Oh yeah. Those, those were great, but what is your titans. right stuff? My right stuff is in Glory. Okay. And it is when Private Trip gets whipped mm -hmm. because that scene is so powerful. Rewatching it, the movie, it just really stands out. You know, he looks with such defiance at Matthew Broderick's character and he doesn't want to show the pain, but you can see that it's really hurting him. And then the single Denzel Washington tear yeah. rolls down his cheek and that you really feel for him. And he said in doing that scene that he didn't know how to play it, so he called to the spirits of the slaves and found attitude and strength. The whip actually hurt a lot, he said, and I was like, don't let him win. And you can definitely see that in Denzel's eyes. I reckon Denzel is the best when it comes to eye work. He really gets in deep to a character. He also said about that scene, he said, I prayed, I went out there with an attitude, like I'm going to take this and not fold, mm -hmm. but it did hurt. The tear was real. You just allow it and you're thankful for a moment like that. It's not technical, it's not science, it is spirit. Yeah, he's incredible. My uh, right stuff, I had to go with flight. Oh, yeah. You know, that was a film. Good movie. I did did not expect it to turn out the way it did. Mm -hmm. Like I thought it was going to turn into sort of like the Captain Sully story and that his character was going to be rewarded and praised. Hero. What I did not expect was for this film to turn into one of the best movies about about addiction that I that I'd ever seen. Yeah. I mean, he was it's so great in this film and it is not the Captain Sully movie at all. He is a functioning alcoholic and that airplane crash scene. Of course, it's Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> so uh, he good. knows how to direct a movie, especially a live action so one. So that's the one you the that's airplane. What I'm going with. Yep. Oh, yeah. That that made me really scared. Well, let's move on to our number 4 in our fast five. In our fast 5, which is You know what normal is to me, Richie. I ain't seen normal since I was 6 years old. Normal to see the police ride up to my house, dragging my little 12-year-old cousin out, tying him to a pole, shoving a shotgun in his mouth so hard they bust his teeth, then they bust two shotgun shells in his head, knock his head off. That's what normal is oh, to me. I sense it that. I like that. I like American that you're using the full clips here. We're yeah. going for it. American <laughs> gangster. Well, it's, it just, it's hard with Denzel because he's got so many great speeches you and I was to trying going. to like edit it down as much as I could, but I was like, no, no, you want to hear his whole thing, that he, his whole sentence that he says. Let it's it American roll. Gangster. Well, American Gangster released November 2nd, 2007, cost $100 million to make, total box office worldwide, $266 million. So number five on our list was a Tony Scott movie. Number mm -hmm. four is a Ridley Scott film. Yes. Two Oscars. Oscar nominations, art direction, and supporting actress Ruby D. Gripping and thrilling, smart and entertaining. Yep. This movie reminded me a lot of the film Heat, 
yes. because they're never actually on screen together until the very end. It also reminded me a bit of Scorsese because of the crime gangster element yeah. to it. Um, apparently, it was supposed to be directed originally by Antoine Fuqua, and so he brought Denzel with him because they'd worked together on Training Day. And then when Ridley came on board, he brought Russell Crowe with him, but Denzel wanting to work again with Russell Crowe because they worked together in 1995's Virtuosity. Virtuosity, oh my God, that's right! <laughs> I saw again last year and I hadn't seen that for a long time and it's cheesy and it's bad but I was like oh yeah I forgot that these two were there together yeah, Virtuosity not a film that I would have like run back out to see if no. watching but I'm glad you saw it didn't make our fast five <laughs> no. um, but yeah there is a bit of familiarity with the subject matter but Denzel's performance is a standout I mean I think it's it's almost inspiring to watch his character build this empire this American dream and then have it all tear down again but Denzel is so strong and he's so strong when he's playing bad yeah he's great i mean he's bad in this movie not like training day bad no. but like bad where he's still like you fear Dangerous. him and you admire him just like you would any one of scorsese's like gangsters yeah and roger ebert loved this movie as well an engrossing story told smoothly and well it's denzel washington and another one of those performances where he is smooth on the outside <laughs> yep. yet ruthless enough to set an enemy on fire which he does <laughs> And the Daily News, the New York Daily News, uh, said this is Denzel Washington's movie. He is as entertainingly evil here as he is in his Oscar-winning performance in Training Day. Ben Kramer on YouTube reminds us of the great supporting cast. Idris Elba, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Cuba Gooden Jr., amazing cast in this one. And Todd McCarthy from Variety said, Washington's steely grip on his impersonation of Frank Lucas holds the film together. Washington presents a man of striking, thoroughly credible contrast contradictions he's cool businessman slash explosive killer loner slash family man an engaging guy slash scourge of society that's a good review great review and uh, i was surprised we didn't get more feedback from our profiles on american gangster yeah. i think they weighed in when we profiled american gangster on our uh, ridley Russ. scott episode oh, ridley scott that's right back we uh, almost put it with russell crowe as well yes we did and we almost did but uh, pablo figueroa said to me american gangster is the best movie by denzel washington there you go yeah okay we'll take it short and sweet simple and to the point short and sweet zeno hour on youtube says virtuosity still doesn't make any sense LOL. <laughs> it doesn't very true well a lot of great trivia when it comes to mr washington hit me up so did you know that he was named after his father and his father was named after the doctor who delivered him but apparently they pronounce their names in different ways how so so apparently it's all about the emphasis the emphasis <laughs> his dad says denzel with the emphasis on the den and then he pronounces his name denzel with the emphasis on the zell so it's all about the emphasis, just like it's all about the pause. Yeah, it's all about Same the thing. emphasis. Same It's all exactly. about the emphasis and the pause. Denzel. Yeah. Well, did you know, and this is like shocking to me, that Denzel Washington passed on seven. Yes, and it was one of the few passes that he actually He really regretted regrets. it. He, really, he, said, <laughs> he said, I was offered the Brad Pitt part. I thought it was too dark and evil. And then I saw the movie and I thought, oh, shoot. I don't know if he said shoot, but that's what we're saying here because this is Profiles and kids might be listening yeah, or watching. family, family show. What well, else you got? Did you know that he is the second of just four African-American actors to win the Oscar for Best Lead Actor? The one before him, Sidney Poitier in 1963, mm -hmm. and then Denzel in 2001. And this is the, he is the, also the first black actor to win two Oscars. When I, the first time I went to the Academy Awards to go was in 2002 with Training Day, and that was when he won for Training Day. Halle Berry won for Monsters Ball. That's right. Sidney Poitier was given a Lifetime Achievement Award, and it was like, oh, the oh, Oscars are getting somewhere. Yeah, of course. <laughs> boy, did that not happen yeah. these last few years. <laughs> but I uh, just remember, I remember sitting in the audience looking at Denzel Washington on the stage holding his Oscar up to Sidney Poitier, and he's holding his Oscar back to him. Oh. And I'm just going like, take this in, take this in, take this in. This is history, and it was one of the greatest moments what of my life. What a moment to life. see. Yeah. Yes, That's it was a incredible. great moment. Did you know that Denzel Washington named his son Malcolm? Ah, oh, I didn't after know Malcolm that. X. And did you know that when he was young and he was in his mother's beauty parlor, a woman who was getting her hair done saw him and wrote down a prophecy that one day he would speak to millions. That's a whoa! That is a very good prophecy. <laughs> I know, very he sure good does. prophecy. One last thing. Did you know the following films? Turned Down, in addition to Seven by Denzel Washington. No, tell me. Amistad. Yeah. 
Blade. Ah. Oh. And Michael Clayton. Ah, oh, Michael Clayton, the yes, George Clooney the role. George Clooney role, yep. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, well, let's keep going with our fast five. At number, number three, three is. You can march like the white man. You can talk like him. You can you can learn his songs. You, you can you can even wear his suits, but you ain't never gonna be nothing to him but an ugly ass chimp in a blue suit. Glory. Glory came out December 14th, 1989, directed by Edward Zwick. Cost $18 million to make, box office $27 million domestic. Three Oscar nominations, including art direction and editing. Three Oscar wins, including sound, cinematography, supporting actor, Denzel Washington's first. Yeah. Little known chapter of the Civil War, unit of the Union Army, all African Americans except for the, C- the senior officers. And uh, even though they have not made a whole lot of films about the Civil War, mm. this is definitely one of the best. It's an interesting story because I didn't know too much about the American Civil War, although I agree with with what Roger Ebert said about the film, which is, I consider this primarily a story about a black experience mm-hmm. and do not know why it needs to be seen largely through white eyes. But Glory is a strong and valuable film. I just think there is a, another quite different film to be made from the same material. And I thought that when I first saw it too, because it's all told through Matthew Broderick's character's eyes. Right. But, you know, Denzel as his character, the the freed uh, um, slave private trip, he is incredible and he is kind of the audience's experience of what someone like him must have gone through in those times. I mean, it's hard to wrap your head around it and he is understandably full of hatred and wants vengeance um, and he's just so good. And to win his Oscar, he had to beat Marlon Brando. To win that, who was nominated for A Dry White Season. Um, And even though Cry Freedom, like you mentioned before, was one of his first big breakout roles, his first nominated, Oscar-nominated role, this, I think, really made people realise, like, what a great actor he is. Yeah, this was like his coming out party on the big screen. Yeah. And Cole Boone, one of our best and most loyal profilers, had this to say about Glory. As many of my film geek friends know, Denzel (laughs) Washington is my favourite actor of all time. He has always brought so much versatility and passion Passion, passion is everything <laughs> to every one of his performances, which is an impressive feat in and of itself. My favorite performance has to be Private Trip from the masterpiece, That Is Glory. He portrays a man in one of the first all-black regiments of the Union Army during the Civil War. He is not afraid to speak his mind and stick up for his brothers in arms and what they are fighting for. It's a mesmerizing, heartfelt performance that garnered Washington his first Academy Award, and boy, did he earn it. Thank you for profiling Denzel, Malone, and Mance. Hashtag Film Geek. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag profile, profile for, for life. life. That's so good. I mean, Glory is all about the idea of freedom and what real freedom looks like and how important freedom is to just being human. And Jack Cull on YouTube says that Glory was the first film he ever cried in when Denzel c- grabs the flag and puts it up and yells to his fellow soldiers, Come on! And he said that he just got goosebumps writing about it again. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. Well, listen, when it comes to the others, (laughs) this this could have been a whole other hour-long show (laughs) in and of itself. And any one of these films, you know what? Any one of these films belongs in our Fast Five. Yeah. So let's just call it Fast Five Plus instead of the others. What are some of the ones that are on your list? Well, uh, we mentioned Flight before, Mm -hmm. and Flight was a film that I think yeah like you i didn't expect it to be as good as as it was as it actually was because i think the trailers just made it out to seem something very pedestrian and then when you get there and he is so great in this complex role that you really understand his character and you feel for his character and you want him to succeed yeah you want him to overcome his addiction and the moment for me in flight is you know when there's the the shot of the minibar fridge Oh. And it's humming om- ominously because you know he wants, like, it. he wants it, but he's trying not to. And then the last minute you see his hand grab the little bottle yeah. and you think it's uh, over. It's, over. it's yeah. all over. And this movie, uh, I, I love this film. Uh, and uh, as Access Hollywood film critic Scott Movie Man oh, said, heard of him. Denzel Washington, who's in every scene, gives an Oscar worthy tour de force performance that's comparable to the great depictions of addiction in cinema, like Ray Milland in The Lost Weekend, Jack Lemon in Days of Wine and Roses, yeah. Nicolas Cage in 
leaving Las Vegas. Very true. Very true. I also love Remember the Titans Mm -hmm. from 2000, which was the true story of the Virginia High School's first racially integrated football team. And Denzel is the coach, you know, pushing them to their limits, rousing them with speeches, never giving up. It's a a rousing crowd pleaser. It's very formulaic and by the numbers. (laughs) But but boy, does it work. I mean, yeah. Oh, my God. He does all the inspirational (laughs) monologue speeches that you need in a football film. You know what? So many people, when I was asking for, like, their best, their best at Denzel Washington yeah. movies. So many people said, remember the Titans. But another film that I actually love that no one mentioned, overlooked film, I got to tell you, is The Manchurian Candidate. Oh, yeah, the From remake. The remake, I thought they're me- remaking The Manchurian Candidate. <laughs> yeah. How do you Ow. do that? But man, Leif Schreiber and, and Denzel Washington, that. it is so freaking good. Directed by Jonathan Demme and uh, Access Hollywood film critic Scott Movie Man <laughs> said, <laughs> I reviewed a lot of his movies, yeah. two time Oscar winner Denzel Washington <laughs> retains with his Philadelphia director to give a grueling performance. By stepping into the role made famous by Frank Sinatra in the original film, he definitely captured is the conflict of a man whose sanity is on the brink. Despite his building paranoia and desperation, he remains entirely sympathetic and never crosses the time to the point where you stop rooting for him. Yeah, very true. Philadelphia from 1993. You know, Denzel's the lawyer who takes on Andrew Beckett's case and how he transforms from someone who doesn't know much about AIDS to fighting for it. Lynette Charles says that she loves Philadelphia. It's a powerful, engaging movie. The film is about a lawyer with AIDS fighting against his law firm for wrong full termination. It focuses on Andrew Beckett's fight against injustice, fights for fairness and equality, something that every, everyone deserves. Brilliant performances by Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. Hashtag film geek, hashtag, hashtag profile, profile for, for life. Yeah, gets a high five. <laughs> Let's keep those high fives coming because also it came out in, t- in 2004, the same year as The Manchurian Candidate, a movie that also got a lot of love. Man on I Fire. I really like this one. Mance on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. I love this movie. It came Some out. Some people don't, but I love you it. Know, it just sort of came out of nowhere. Yeah. I remember Fox had the had the press screening like maybe four days before the movie opened, and everybody we were all standing outside the Zionic Theater, you know, in the Fox lot. We're just mm-hmm. going, "Oh my God, that was a, that was a really great movie!" And Axis Hollywood film critic Scott <laughs> Movie Mance <laughs> said, after winning an Oscar for his deliciously over the top corrupt cop in 2001's Training Day, Washington gives what may be one of the best performances of his career in Mance on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> he runs a gamut of emotions ranging from burned out drunk to paternal father figure to sadistic avenging angel and the vocal inflection of his one liners elevates his dialogue to classic status piece by piece do you hear me <laughs> piece by piece piece by piece I love when he goes on a war path he's so good Cathal Thomas Coleman says about Man on Fire uh, what follows is a man on a path of revenge and reverting to the demons of his past Denzel Washington gives a standout performance in one of Tony Scott's best films the two formed a great partnership over the years and this might be my favorite of their collaborations. But let's talk about another one of yours. Yes. Because I know you wanted to put this in our Fast Five, Alicia Malone. Yes, what's that? The Hurricane. The Hurricane. Yes. yes. He's so good. 1999. He was nominated. Tick that off your list. He was nominated. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I know. Thick. I like it. Um, nominated for an Oscar for playing Robin Hurricane Carter, who was a boxer committed for a crime he didn't commit. So good in this role. So he great. lost the Academy Award to Kevin Spacey, uh, who was on a roll that year because of American Beauty. Yeah, uh, other role. other movies. I mean, we've got to mention uh, I mean, Inside Man, yeah, directed by Inside Spike Mance. Lee. <laughs> great Inside Man. So oh, you're on it. Wait, that gets a high five. That 2006. Gets a high five. Very very good 2006 out of time from 2003 yeah, out of time. excellent excellent film mm-hmm. unstoppable yeah i saw quite a few people on youtube saying i kind of like unstoppable yeah unstoppable it's, it's like the train in the in the film goes. it starts off slow but then when it goes and it takes off it just keeps on going yes safe house with ryan reynolds also very good but also the two movies that he did direct Antoine Fisher, his directorial debut, Tugs at the Heartstrings, very good movie, great performance from Derek Luke, who he handpicked for this film, oh, yeah, and also Derek's his good. second film, The Great Debaters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I haven't seen that one, actually. It's terrific. It, it sort of it goes to the next level. It's a great sophomore effort, another rising, arousing, inspiring, and uplifting film, and, and his performance is great. You know, he just sort of that goodbye Mr. Chip's teacher. Yeah. Uh, but we also have some brackets. We do, we Let's do. Let's brackets. 
tickets. So on our profile's Facebook page, Cole Boone uh, created the Denzel Washington Performances Bracket. Oh. Where they pitched, uh, pitted 16 of Denzel's greatest and most beloved performances against one another. And so when it came down to the final four, it was Malcolm X versus Ruben Hurricane Carter. Can you okay, guess who's uh, going to uh, win? Malcolm X. Yes, okay. correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> then there was Private Trip from Glory versus Detective Alonzo Harris Alonzo. from Training Day. Alonzo. No. No. Trip. No way. Private Trip. So the finals came down to Malcolm X versus Private Trip. Who do you think won the best Denzel Washington performance? Well, I got to go with Malcolm X. Malcolm X. Malcolm X. Very Malcolm good X. choice. Very, Thank you very, so much very to good Cole choice. Boone and everyone else um, who participated in those brackets. Wow, excellent. Yes, those brackets are the best. The highlight of our show, as is our number two movie on our Fast Five, which is... is... You think you can do this shit? Yay! You think you can do this to me? <laughs> you mother will be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I get finished with you. Please tell me you used it. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't. You didn't use the quote, King Kong ain't got beep on me. Yeah, no, I didn't use it. Oh, that okay, well, that's cool because we're going to say that, that line again anyway. Training day. Training day, <laughs> October 5th, 2001. Which he added that line himself, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Yeah. He also fought to make sure his character died in that film because the original yeah, version, right. he was going to live. But yes, Training Day, he October said, no, 5th, 2001. A death. Yes, he did need a violent death. Cost $45 million to make. Box office $105 million worldwide. Directed by Antoine Fuqua. Written by David Ayer. Two AKA Oscar nominations. Suicide Squad director. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Suicide <laughs> Squad director. He's going to explode. Yeah. Two Oscar nominations for supporting actor Ethan Hawke. And one Oscar win for Denzel Washington. God, Here's the interesting so thing about this movie. I saw this film on September 11th, 2001. Oh, geez. You know, that film, because that day just, uh, it was, uh, no one did any work. We were all just glued to our TVs, checking in to make sure that Family Back East was okay. Yeah. And I just checked in with Warner Brothers, I guess tonight's screening is canceled. I just wanted to look a little bit of a distraction. Yeah. And they said, no, we're still having a screening. Feel free to come if you oh. want to. And I went, and uh, I feel like maybe this was like a really fit the mood of the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was grateful for the distraction, and mm -hmm. for for at least a little bit, just was embraced by Denzel Washington's incredible performance, and he did win. I love this movie. It's gritty. Okay. It's intense. It's taut. It is brutal. Oh yeah. What a stunning performance. You could tell. He's just loving the hell out of this Yeah, movie. he's really enjoying it. Um, and he is terrifying in this role. You just don't know what he's going to do next. Plus, he's so charming and calculated, and he pulls off that smart, corrupt cop so well. Um, it's his focused on you know 24 hour period so Anton Fuqua looked to Dog Day Afternoon for some inspiration you could definitely feel that originally he was supposed to star Samuel L. Jackson and Matt Damon and, that would have uh, been a very different role the director was film. going to be who oh David Guggenheim yeah and Matt Damon was going to play the partner yes yeah so yeah it turned out pretty good the way turned it did out very good i remember i saw this one in theaters like in, in the cinema with a packed crowd and it absolutely blew me away you know they went to some of the dangerous suburbs here in la to film and they wanted to be authentic and they cast some real life gangsters as extras and people in the background how great is that scene when he's playing cards with the thugs yeah and he he left them there i know and he just like left them there because he knew that the thugs were going to take care of him. but the way the card game sort of plays out yeah it's just i mean the whole movie's like that i like the way that everything connects within the 24 hours so. and the, like wait the way you just said what you just said about how his performance like you know, he's totally irresistible and charming but you don't know at any moment what side he's going to be exactly. on exactly and you can understand ethan Hawke's character wanting to be liked by him and wanting to do the right thing and wanting to follow him because you know you believe him when he's like just do this just do it it's fine like yep. do it like you know, the smoke money. the pot you yeah. know yeah it's three million dollars taxation without representation yeah. my friend and or else or else this and he's, yeah. he can turn on a dime which is incredible um apparently the naacp visited denzel on the set he was unhappy they were unhappy that he was playing a 
corrupt cop. They thought that could be a quick bit stereotypical. Mm -hmm. And Ethan Hawke said that he was so impressed with Denzel's response because Denzel said, I'm an artist, that's how I lead, not by being some dubious role model, by only playing squeaky clean people. I'll be a role model by being great at my job. Wow. And he definitely was. And USA Today loved the film. With its unflinching style, Training Day can be hard to sit through, but it's worth the discomfort for the adrenaline rush of the plot and Denzel Washington's compelling performance. And it shows that he's able to play these like deeply flawed characters. And he just like just love like this. Oh yeah, I can play a baddie. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna chew every scene <laughs> yeah. in all the right ways. And I know that's why some people don't like it. Some people say, oh, it's a bit too over the top. But I think no, it's right. for me, it's just right. Just right. And Aaron Turner, a uh, profiler who we, who we hear from time to time, says Training Day was such a detour from the usually good guy roles he was used to playing. From the moment Ethan Hawke's Hoyt gets in the car, you don't yeah. trust Alonzo. He always seems to be on the other side of the law. You want to like him because Denzel is so charming, even when he is being incredibly corrupt. King Kong ain't got anything on this performance. Hashtag Film Geek. Hashtag Profile for Life. Yeah. Hashtag It's All About the Pause. <laughs> it's all about the pause. I like that that's become a hashtag. And Mario, how would you say that last Spl name? Blurry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mario. But we're reading your comments, so cut us some slack. Spoleori uh, says, Training Day was a gangster cop cape <laughs> gangster slash cop game changer for me use your words Malone and Denzel is the main reason with his evil and cool performance greetings and big thanks from Germany to hey. Alicia and Scott you are making my trips to work so much better your informative work and impressive knowledge are blessings it's time to catch up with all the profile episodes thanks Yay. so much Mario thank you so That's much so Mario great. and to you make sure you catch up on all the profiles episodes you can do some business catch them all on iTunes if you want to listen on your way to work or in the car or you're on a run Make sure you rate and review us on iTunes. Make sure you go to youtube.com backslash popcorn talk network and share the video of our shows. And there's 50 of them now, including this one with Denzel Washington. And make sure like you shoot hours, us though. tweets. Yes. <laughs> Boy, we put a lot of work into this thing, but we did love every minute of it. And make sure you uh, tweet us at Alicia Malone, <laughs> at Movie Mance, at Alicia Malone. At Movie Mance. It's all about the pause. Oh, at Alicia Malone. God. At Movie Mance. So <laughs> what? Crazy. She's up. What? And she's up. What? And if you would like to buy these Profiles t-shirts, we're both wearing our hashtag Film Geek t-shirts, you can go to tpublic.com slash user slash profiles. Yes. And uh, make sure you uh, do spread the word about Profiles. And now that brings us to... Number one in our on fast, a five. fast five, Denzel Washington. Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. Yeah, oh, Malcolm, Malcolm X. X released on November 18, 1992. Two Oscar nominations, costume design, best actor for Denzel Washington. Lost to Hua uh, uh, Al Pacino for Sin of a Woman, but man oh man, Denzel Washington should have won. This movie should have been nominated for Best Picture and Best Director as well. Surprised it wasn't. It cost $33 million to make. Box office was $48 million domestic. Spike Lee's epic, sweeping, ambitious, and powerful biopic of Malcolm X. What a film. Three hours yeah, and 22 film. minutes, man. This is the second of the four collaborations these two did together. And Denzel had played Malcolm X before on stage in 1981 in the play called When the Chickens Come Home to Roost but he it was still controversial casting when he took the role of Malcolm X some members of the black community saying he was too light skinned or too much of a sex symbol oh, right. but his performance definitely silenced any critics because he was just incredible he uh, does the impossible you know humanizing this icon him and making an icon seem more human at the same time um it's kind of like three roles in one when it you is. look at it because you've got the opening act where he's the hustler guy yep. and then the middle act when he he's starts to go yeah jail and then he starts to go through um the uh transition. nation of islam yep. the organization and transition into this leader and then the third act when he comes back from mecca and he's very calm and serene the guy. rebirth the, the rebirth, rebirth is powerful the and each of one islam. of them is so multi-layered and um just really uh, 
cohesive at the same time, even though they're quite different characters. This movie's 24 years old. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the movie's 24 years old. It's just as potent and powerful now as it was. I think it's more now. Yeah, it's more fitting and more relevant now. And uh, the prep that Denzel Washington did for this role. He avoided pork, he went to Islam classes, he even knew which glasses Malcolm X wore on any particular day. Wow. And Norman Jewison, who uh, Denzel Washington had worked with before, long time ago on A Soldier Story, he was going to direct the film, but there was an outcry that the film should be directed by a black director, yeah, yeah. and Spike Lee knocked it out yeah, of the park. It's really incredible in the way it jumps back and forth in time, and it just keeps moving the whole three hours. It doesn't feel like it, does it? doesn't feel like it at all, and I know that both Roger Ebert and Martin Scorsese called it, the film, one of their top ten of the 1990s. It is a great film, and Ebert actually said Denzel Washington stands at the center of of this film in a performance of enormous range. He never seems to be trying for an effect, yet he is always convincing right up until the end. And Josh Price hey, Josh. says about Malcolm X, it stands as one of the greatest biopics in the history of cinema, and so much that lies, so much of that lies with Denzel Washington's performance. He's at the center of the film, portraying the larger-than-life figure in such a naturalistic way, and with what seems like relative ease. The performance contains such grandeur and power, backed up by a hidden anger that alludes to the awe-inspiring man beneath. But at the same time, the role carries such precision and delicacy with it that Malcolm becomes more than just a page of history. He becomes flesh and blood again. Washington is convincing for every second he is on screen, from the streets of Harlem to the fateful pilgrimage to Mecca. And We've got such smart profilers. Such smart. And of course, <laughs> so one of the smarts of them all, Rachel Cushing. Yay, we Rachel. give the last word and our comments to the lovely and talented Rachel Cushing. <laughs> Despite delivering countless iconic performances over the last 29 Nine years, there's no question in my mind that Denzel Washington's portrayal of the divisive and enigmatic Malcolm X is his absolute best. Yeah. Spike Lee's three hour long biopic of the black rights advocate rests solely on Washington's shoulders and it delivers in an explosively charismatic way. Malcolm's arc from dapper con man to angry inmate to spiritual leader is a thing of beauty as Washington not only nails the fire and brimstone of his various speeches, but also the subtle character moments that help humanize the man who has become a legend. Washington has become known for his perfect balance of gravity and charisma, and that combination was born in this role. His infectious smile, smoldering anger, and quiet dignity put together create an indelible portrait of that that was and still is mesmerizing to behold. Hashtag film geek, hashtag profiler for life. Yeah, a lot and of people on YouTube saying that he should have gotten the Oscar for Malcolm X, that uh, the one for Al Pacino was more of a lifetime achievement. Sure, yeah, <laughs> it was. Very, very true. And uh, Phil Marlowe reminds us that we need to do a profile for Daniel Day-Lewis. We need to do a profile for <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get more. to that. And one last word from Rachel Cushing said, thank you, Scott and Alicia. And oh, that brings nice. us to our important announcements. Yes. Which after a year and a half or more, after 50 episodes of Profiles, this is our last for the Popcorn Talk Network. Yes. But have no fear. This is just the end of phase one. Profiles will be back in one way or another. We're using Marvel's thing. Phase yes, two. phase one. <laughs> no. You know, it's sort of a cliche now. Yeah. <laughs> so, profiles phase one. Uh, you know, we we want to uh, evolve and we want to. We put a lot of work into profiles. We rewatch the films. We do all our research. We book the guests. We get the show placed on social media so more people can discover it. Yeah. But we really struggled for view struggle for viewership, and uh, that's been really really hard. So so please help us out by spreading the word about Profiles. It's never too late. And make sure you do like our Facebook page, Profiles yes. with Malone and Mance. Because that's where you can keep up with our news and see what we're doing next. A lot of people to thank, especially our loyal profilers. That would be Steve Zissou, Rachel Cushing, Billy Pollahan, Liam Logran, Tyler Myers, Tyler Scott, Dan Skip Allen. Yeah. Keep that applause coming. George <laughs> McGann, Cole Boone, Cathal Thomas Coleman, Seb Lacey, Lynette Charles. Big thanks to our good friend Ken Knapsack, the pit boss, you rule yeah. for doing almost every one Absolutely. of our wonderful life is life, except for the one that you did. <laughs> Big thanks to Brett Olson for designing yeah, the look, the look of our show. He does all, all the graphics for does us. All the graphics. He designed our shirts. Yay. Brett Olson, he is 
as much of a profiler as me and Alicia. Big thanks to the Popcorn Talk Network for yes, letting us you. do the show that we've always wanted to do. For thanks to our friend half. Christian Harloff for half. giving us the idea to do profiles. Yes. And last but certainly not least, thank you to my <laughs> co-host, Alicia Malone. Thank you for inspiring me. Aww. Thank you for being a great co-host, a great co-producer, a great co-pilot, a great film geek, <laughs> and definitely the best friend that this film geek could ever Aww. ask for. Well, thank you, Scott Mance. You know, I remember when Christian came to me with the idea for Profiles, and he said, would you want to have a co-host? So, Absolutely. Who do you want? Scott Mance. Straight away. Same breath. There was no one else who has the same kind of film geek <laughs> love, <laughs> love as I do for passion, passion energy, classics, knowledge, knowledge, and the willingness to do this because I think each episode, what well, it must take... I can't even think of how many hours it takes us to put together because when you take in lot. the five films plus all the research, I know it takes me at least three hours to do all the research and editing and then you booking the guests and hustling. So thank you for being right on board with me the whole time. And this is not the end. We'll it's be doing more end. stuff in the future. Who knows what the future holds for Profiles or whatever it's going and to be Malone called. And Malone And Malone and Mance. <laughs> and by the way, I just have to say, no matter what the future holds for Profiles, whatever it's called, Malone and Mance, Indies Are My Jam, which is on her channel, Movies Are My Jam, m and Reviews, but no matter what, I have to say, Alicia Malone <laughs> will always have Profiles. <laughs> so, love it. here's looking at you, kid. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks again to Popcorn Talk Network and everyone here behind the scenes who's made this show so fantastic. In the meantime, there's 50 episodes that aren't going anywhere. So you can watch them all over and over again. And before we let you go, our rundown for Denzel Washington once oh, again. Yes. <laughs> number five, Crimson, Crimson Tide. Tide. Number four, American, American Gangster. Gangster. Number three, Glory. Glory. Number two, Train. Train Training day number one, Malcolm, Malcolm X. X. Close your book. The books are closed. <laughs> one more high five for the road, yeah. Alicia Malone. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.